I can proceed now with my installation of Exchange Server. So what I'll do is, is I'll, I've got the disk inside the drive, and I'll go to Computer, and I'll run the disk, and we'll see how, we'll see if this works. Okay, you can see that the the Exchange Server 2010 dialog box under installation has seen the .NET framework. It's seen the PowerShell, which has both been installed. And now, step three, it wants me to choose an Exchange language option. So I'll click on that, and I'll just install the languages from the DVD. Okay. Now I need to install Microsoft Exchange. So step four. Okay, Exchange Server 2010 setup is initializing. Okay, so here is the Exchange Server 2010 setup wizard. So we'll hit Next, and we will accept the license agreement. We'll hit Next, and it asks me if I have any, um, if I want to take part in error reporting, and I'm going to say no. And it asks me if I want to do a custom Exchange Server installation or a typical. In the typical, it looks like it's going to install Hub Transport, Client Access, Mailbox, and Management Tools. And that's all I need. Uh, Unified Messaging Server is best put on a separate server, so I don't need that. And I'm not creating an Edge Transport Server, so I don't really need that. So we'll just go with the typical, and we'll hit Next. All right, and we're going to, um, I'm going to type in mail for Dan's games. Do I have any client computers running Outlook 2003 or Entourage? The answer is no, so I'll hit next. And now it wants to say how um, the domain name that will be internet facing, so the external domain name for clients to access your mail server. So I'm going to go with mail.dansgames.com and hit next. And I'm not going to join the customer experience improvement program right now and hit next. And now it's going to go through a series of readiness checks to see if the server is ready and it has all the prerequisites um, and if the system is, is working well enough to um, accept this installation. Okay, so far so good. I got a warning at the top about ha not having any 2007 Exchange server roles um, detected, and that's okay because I'm not running 2007 mail server on my network. The language prerequisites worked. The hub transport role uh, completed, so that's good news. Client access role complete. And now if we can get this mailbox role prerequisites to complete, that would be great. All right, now it's saying that it does want me to um, get the go.microsoft.com um, filter pack for 2007 Office. So what I'm going to do is um, it's a warning, so I don't have to do it right now. I'm going to write down this link right here, and then I'll go get these tools after the installation. Okay, I wrote down this link, and now we're ready to install, so I'll just click Install. You can follow along with the inst installation um, progress with these little progress bars, and um, I'll probably pause the recording and come back if there is any type of problem during the installation process if we have any failures or if we have any hang-ups or anything that we need to do but hopefully at the end everything will go well and I'll show you the finished screen 
Okay, so the Exchange server setup is going pretty good. I've paused the recording, but you can see here that we've got the organization preparation and setup and copied the files correctly. So we're working on the language files right now, and um, you can see the setup time is taking quite a bit. Uh, 23 minutes for this, 14 minutes for this, so that's 37. So right now we're at about 45 minutes and counting. We'll see what the total time is. Okay, it looks like the Exchange Server 2010 setup wizard worked out. Looks like we had, let's scroll down here. All right, it looks like all roles, the hub transport role, the client access role, the mailbox role, and the finalizing of the setup, as well as the management tools, looks like they all completed with a green check mark, so that's good. So, and uh, it looks like I've got to finalize this installation using Exchange Management Console. That's fine, so I'll hit finish. Okay. All right, great. So now that that worked out and we have a good um, install, what I can do is, is I can open this up over here and take a look at the different tools that we have available for setting up mail. All right, and you can see we've got the organization configuration, the server configuration, and the recipient configuration. I'm also getting a note that I need to um, that I need to put in the product key, and that I have 119 days before I need to put in the um, activation code. So for the activation code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, I believe it is the organization configuration. No, maybe it's the server configuration. We'll go to server configuration. And when I go to server configuration and highlight here, you can see over here it says enter product key. And this is where I'll this is what I'll use to enter my product key and activate my server. Now that we have our server installed and Active Directory installed and Exchange Server also installed, it's time to um, make some users. So I'm going to open up the server manager because if we're going to send some mail, we're going to have to have some users with which to send mail to and from. So I'm going to open up my roles and let's see here, Active Directory, users, I'll slide this over and we'll go into users and we'll open this up and you can see if I select this dansgames.com you see there's a users folder but for right now I'll just make some users just to sit out here so that they're easy to see so I'll right click and say new user and We'll call this user um, student, and we'll say user logon name is student, and we'll make the password never expire, and we'll give them a complex um, password. Okay, that sounds good. And then I unchecked user must change password at next login and check mark password never expires. Okay. All right, so we have one student user. Let's make an admin user. We'll say new user. Make an admin user. Logon name we'll say is and for security purposes probably a username of admin is probably fairly typical which is then not secure so if we decided to change that slightly you'd have something that'd be a little more um, secure I could call this one mail admin but I'll just leave it admin for right now it's fine hit next uncheck this password never expires and then we need to make a um, password here All right. Okay, so we've got two users here, one named student, one named admin, and then we'll make a, another test user. We'll call this user Tracy. 